Hello and welcome to a video where we're gonna look at Jurassic content that's been created by the community. There has been a whole bunch of these that have existed on YouTube for a while and I've sort of saved them to a folder uh, or like a, a playlist, sorry, of things to react to. If uh, anyone is a Jurassic fan, after Jurassic Park 3, you know what it was like. It was dead silence. There was no movie coming out. There was literally nothing. It was like, you had your movies, your three movies, that's your lot. And then it was in development hell for the longest time. But the Jurassic franchise, I guess, was kept alive by the community. And now in the modern age, when we've got like access to Blender and all these amazing softwares, we can literally make any kind of story. We no longer have to do machinimas of JPOG with Windows Movie Maker subtitles in the bottom. Yeah, that, that that's what I had to do. <laughs> anyway, let's have a look. This is called The Dive Part 1, so there's a part 2. I know nothing about this. This is a Jurassic World Dominion horror film. I'm very excited because one thing that was very sorely missed when it came to Dominion was the Mosasaur. We saw it at the start and then by the end it was there and it was like, oh well, it's kind of getting on with the whales, which really was not what I thought they were going to do with the most, but I, I digress. Anyway, let's have a look. She's within 50 feet of us, though you wouldn't think it given the visibility of the water. Depth, 90 feet. Oh, oh. I thought it was a submarine. Actually. Closing in, 30 feet. There she is, the Spartan. Been down here for almost 30 years. John? That's incredible. Spartan 117? Come, Daniel. We'll do a full loop and then explore <laughs> Come, inside. Come, Daniel. Okay? <laughs> Depth, did the crew survive? All but one. He's done nice reverb on the voice. I think, like, maybe some sort of um, respirator or, like, some filter, like the bubbles and stuff, would, uh, would make that even more believable. Are we going to see, like, a silhouette? Yeah, I thought so. <laughs> like, my eyes being drawn to that bit. That was good. Anything still in there? Doesn't look it. Oh, wow. I mean, when you compare this to my Jurassic Park 5 video, I mean, there's no comparison. Hey, look, Daniel, check <laughs> this out. Look, Daniel. Is that what I think it is? Is Daniel gonna die? If you're thinking what I'm thinking, then yes. <laughs> Daniel? <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Daniel. <laughs> Daniel? Daniel, no! Daniel? Was his name Daniel? I can't remember. <laughs> So is it was it just like a, a great white shark that that grabbed him? No, no naughty language here. Repeat your channel. <laughs> Surface, we've got an emergency down here. I've got a missing diver, and I think I've No 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 missing Daniel! What the hell? Is it like an anglerfish? <laughs> Ooh. Eric, I'm heading for the surface now. I need you to be directly above the wreck immediately. Dude! Decompression sickness! You're gonna you're gonna explode! <laughs> oh my god! Hey, he's his his blood is gonna explode! Oh it's a please you saw! Either way, he's gonna die one. Oh no! Oh pull him down as well! Oh the blood pressure and everything! Oh he's basically as good as dead. But he he's, he's alive, he's fine. <laughs> what what? Just drag him down. No, you've got to see, got to see this ship. What was that? Oh, the Mosasaur! <laughs> Feed him to the Mosasaur! <laughs> oh, so that was part one. Ooh, part two. Hell yeah, let's go. I see a Dunkelostius in the thumbnail. Let's do it. It's very creative. I like it. It's stuff that when I was a kid, you know, not not saying that like, oh, kid made, I don't know. They could have done so much. It's just imagination, right? Like you had this with Dominion and it was wasted. You could have done so much with the underwater. What is that? Oh no, that's not the submarine, is it? Oh no, this doesn't seem good. Yeah, everything's still looking good on my end too, Leroy. You're not far now. I mean, they got the radio, radio voices down. On the sub's ballast. Keep them full before the descent. Remember, there's another 200 foot dive ahead. I'll let you know when it's time. Okay, I think I'm directly over the cavern right now, Sam. That's right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> this guy has a habit of like saying the names. I'm directly over the site, Sam. Oh. It's a Mosasaur. 
What's it called? Shinkai. Probably means like monster, but that'd be kaiju. My god, the things we do for science. <laughs> My god, the things we do for science. It's, it's kind of the start of the, you know, those B-movies you'd see. It was like, oh, I found this little air pocket in the middle of it. And it turns out it's like a whole ecosystem of, uh, of prehistoric creatures the world never seen before. Although it's really good, actually. We're not... We've got lots of different environments, which is more than I was expecting. I think it, I was just expecting the submarine and then it was beaten by a Mosasaur, but... A strictly observa- What else was he gonna do? Is a submarine gonna get, like, chewed on now? I knew it. <laughs> oh, okay. Just swimming around. My god. My god. <laughs> Leroy. Leroy? I can't believe what I'm looking at. You, you've got to be kidding me. It's Ice Age! They did that joke right? I think I'm looking at a Dunkelostius. Sam, that's a dunk. That's a I dunk. Know what I'm looking at. It's incredibly well preserved. <laughs> I love it. Like to everyone in this sort of world, right? Like the dinosaur sphere. Like we all have nicknames for things and what have you. And we forget that the rest of the world do doesn't have like a clue, really. <laughs> it's like when I went car car to the car car and Dinosaurus. And then she was like, what? And she got me the car. <laughs> it's, like, it's a dunk. Oh, dear. It's funny. <laughs> oh, my God. Daniel? <laughs> I hate Daniel. <laughs> Die, Daniel. <laughs> it's just going to be like pulled away by something, isn't it? Gonna go, Whoa. Oh, it'd be cool if it smashed through. Oh my god, it's like the scene from Godzilla. Like <laughs> it would smash through the ice. Like, ah, uh, there can't be an easy way to get to him. But did he? Oh no, he fell in. Ah, it's fine. Owen was fine. You'll be fine. It's not like a, this, this is easier. Oh my god, he's inked. <laughs> Yeah, that's the shot. That was like, this is it. So, no, Daniel! <laughs> Did Daniel just grab him like, You must come with me, child, and die in the depths. Oh, that was beautiful. Is that it? Oh, wait, what? He's alive? Leroy, can you hear me? Come on, Leroy. Did you see Daniel down there? Did none of that happen? He didn't see a dunk? Oh. Oh, my God. Oh, he, he got gutted like Samuel Jackson in Deep Blue. Who? It's gonna munch him. Nom, nom, nom. So wait, did that happen at all? Like, I'm confused. <laughs> did did he see the dunk or? Any more questions? We need a dive part three. That's what we need. Guys, if you've enjoyed that, check out Ali Awada. We're going to have a quick jump to some other uh, creators that have done sort of Jurassic Park horror I've seen popping up every now and again. Next, we have the San Diego Incident by Chronodican. Uh, Chronodican made or was making a Jurassic Park survival esque game and unfortunately it was struck Stop down by there. Universal due to copyrights and license issues and all that jazz so hopefully we'll get that releasing without all of its licensing but he did make this I think while working on this let's see this one so this is like a found footage oh I like it so I don't know what this is but well I guess I'll just let it speak for itself oh that's definitely his voice yeah 100% <laughs> No, nothing's happening. Oh. Friggin' T-Rex is Godzilla. I kind of love it, though. This was probably one of my nightmares as a kid. Seeing something huge in my bedroom window. Like, I would have the curtains closed, and I could just imagine, like, a silhouette of something. Oh, gave me nightmares thinking about that. And I swear I remember reading a book or something where it had a scene of, like this, where the Turks broke through the window and ate the, the, the kid or something. 
Oh, we got like siren head in the background. <laughs> At this point, I'm not even thinking it's a T-Rex. I'm thinking like, this this is Godzilla. Godzilla's attacking here, man. <laughs> Ah, oh, looks so cool. With the VHS filter over the top of it and everything. That's right, just stay in the middle of the house. <laughs> yeah, that's, oh yeah, close the blind. <laughs> That'll stop it, yes. Oh, is it, oh, okay. I thought it was gonna like smash its head into the side. Love that. That sound, I think, only exists in the first Jurassic Park movie. That oom, this this weird. Oh, there we go! Oh, that's so cool! Oh my god! It just wants a hug. Like Cloverfield. Whoa, that was so quick! Jeez. That was awesome though, love it, love it. Now, there is one video I did want to react to, 100%, and it's been in my playlist for so long, and it is called The Most Terrifying Prehistoric Creatures. Now, when I was first on the YouTube scene, there was always these sorts of videos, like top five, oh, most scariest things ever, and they used the craziest thumbnails. And this one used a freaking skull crawler, uh, and I was like, that, that definitely didn't exist. <laughs> so let's give it a watch, shall we? Let, I'm no paleontologist, so I couldn't tell, uh, you know, apart from the, the basic things, if they're, they're telling the truth or not. But let's let's have a look. Let's see what it has to offer. Hi, it's Katrina. Hi, Katrina. Number 10, the sea beast. A newly sea beast. discovered fossil has revealed a terrifying aquatic predator that scientists have compared mm. to the T-Rex. They are they call, they compare everything to the T-Rex, The underwater though. Rex, a fierce and relentless hunter that <laughs> lived during that the late Cretaceous bones. period. The prehistoric monster has been named Thalassotitan Aatrox, Aatrox, and it lived between 145 and 66 million years ago. The creature likely had a head that looked reptilian and hunted challenging prey such as sea turtles, that's a, that, I was gonna say, that's a weird sea turtle. <laughs> Paleontologist Nick Longrich from the University of Bath and there it is. It best There's the when bat. He said the prehistoric <laughs> mosasaur was like a Komodo dragon mixed with a great white shark, but with a T-Rex and a killer whale mixed in for good. What is this Jurassic World with the hybrids? It's a bit of everything. Its fossilized teeth were found oh, yeah? broken and worn, suggesting they had been used to rip through the bones of other. Oh, that's a beautiful. I love that render. Nobody knows These for renders sure are brilliant. They, they definitely it was paid eating, somebody to make But these. scientists believe it was crunching the bones of its own. Oh, kind. glorious. Number, Number nine. nine, the Truden. The tr there it is! There it is! <laughs> However, scientists are unsure if this slender and bizarre dinosaur was an ancestor of either or both. What made the Truden a truly is it even a dinosaur anymore? I, I thought like we, was its brain. we realized that it its wasn't a dinosaur, was or like it wasn't even like its own than species. The sorry, of modern reptiles in relation like to the Truden no longer exists. Scientists it's a genus speculate that with its massive brain, the Truden was far more intelligent than the average. It could play chess. In 1982, Canadian paleontologist Dale Russell speculated that if the Truden had survived the extinction of the dinosaurs. Yeah it would have evolved to have human level intelligence. I need to talk with that guy. That it would have continued to Where grow, is he? What's his like number? Monkey... Give, give me Dale's number. <laughs> Actually, the Truden would have become a brainy, perceptive, walking and talking reptile with partially opposable thumbs <laughs> with smartphones and three fingers and, uh, on its hands. And nuclear missiles. Purosaurus. In the world of prehistory, Wait, there were two giant crocodilians that make all living crocodilians look like baby lizards. <laughs> and the Purosaurus. No one is really sure which one was bigger, though many scientists lean toward the Purosaurus as being it's the pure massively. <laughs> that this thing would have been found lurking around lakes and swamps, waiting for thirsty, unwitting animals to show up for a drink. Then it would have burst out of the water and captured its victim in its powerful yep. jaws. Mm -hmm. That's a crocodile. Nobody knows exactly how large the prehistoric crocodile grew. So it could probably grew. get to but based on 500 foot skull, long. I don't know. It grew anywhere between 34 oh. and 41 feet That's long. Giganotosaurus. The Giganotosaurus oh, was even bigger than the Tyrannosaurus eee. Rex. Scientists <laughs> believe the heaviest Giganotosaurus was about 10 tons. 
whereas a female T-Rex could weigh just a little over oh, nine tons. Oh, don't fat shame her. It's not really a oh, huge look, difference, <laughs> but it's enough to make the yes. Gigantosaurus what is the Stephen Fry's show? <laughs> But here's where things get truly terrifying. I know. Researchers believe there they is look no horrendous. way a Giganotus. <laughs> it's believed it could run faster than the smaller T-Rex, potentially reaching speeds this up is, to this 20 is, miles This is propaganda. This is anti-Rex propaganda. The Microraptor. A Microraptor. In Greek, the name Microraptor translates to small thief. This dinosaur is oh. one of the smallest ever <laughs> discovered. <laughs> The smallest official species of raptor. Who's that a it dragon? It weighed about two pounds and stood one foot tall, <laughs> about the size of a crow. <laughs> In the realm of all things terrifying, the raptor was a little terror. No. It wasn't as big and dangerous as a 30 foot turkey. Ah, Jurassic Park reference. Nice. The micro raptor was kind of like an oversized hummingbird with a hunger for meat. Oh, there meat. it is. <laughs> Scientists <laughs> have it also confirmed it twice. It's if we're making a program, yeah, it's a YouTube video, I know. And we're doing scientifically accurate stuff, we're, we're naming measurements, theories. Why do we undermine it all? By putting a dragon in? Why do we do- Whose decision was this? Ah, oh, no, we don't have an image there. Type in like, I don't know, free dragon into YouTube and green screen it. Like going into this, I saw the Trodon image, the, the skull crawl and thought, okay, it's just an image. Who? Who edited this and went, yeah, put a dragon in there? Yeah. <laughs> the only difference is that the Archaeopteryx wasn't a raptor. <gasps> it was a non avian link. But was it a dragon? And modern birds. Come on. Number five, the Gigantoraptor. We'll the Gigantoraptor, despite the name, was not technically a raptor. No, those are spinosaurs you just put in the bottom. <laughs> million. When compared to a human, a fully grown individual wouldn't have stood any taller than its knees. Whoa, that's, it was is that truly legit? huge. And yet all we know about legit. it comes from a single fossil specimen that is found absolutely in Mongolia in 2005. I mean, hence the, name. the fossil was found by accident by a Chinese paleontologist uh -huh. while filming a documentary about a totally unrelated dinosaur. What a coincidence! The prehistoric creature was so big, it could have easily consumed a whole family of humans for a midday. Oh, that's nice. Cheery thoughts, put you to sleep. Pterodactyls were some of the most terrifying creatures that oh, dominated the they skies during the age of the dinosaurs. Terror. Terror. They weren't technically dinosaurs, but were flying reptiles. Yes. They had bat-like wings, only extremely- They fly like that as well? <laughs> the biggest pterodactyl of them all was also the largest flying animal that ever lived. It's called the Quetzalcoatlus Northrop. Right, it could be outdated. It it, I'm pretty sure it's a Gopteryx is bigger, ago. and they're not pterosaurs, I don't think, or pterodactyls. Anywhere, but the most notable feature of this giant reptile was its skull. <laughs> it had an extremely <laughs> was it long its Gatling beak, guns on its wings. Like stork, <laughs> which it could have used for picking dinosaurs off the ground, like you might pick up an ant with a pair of tweezers. And while it could have done that, it probably didn't. Like most <laughs> Animals, the Quetzalcoatlus likely that, sustained itself didn't. on a diet <laughs> of fish. <laughs> Only about 28,000 years ago, these I don't know too much about were some the, uh, of the most brutal era. predators of both the Pliocene and the Pleistocene, growing just about four <laughs> feet at the shoulder. <laughs> Help him, as an African lion. <laughs> The biggest difference. Wow, that's a lovely. He's still lost. <laughs> Number two. Chalicotherium. Chalicotherium. The Chalicotherium lived 15 million years ago, long after the dinosaurs. The most terrifying prehistoric creatures this video is. The truth is that the Chalicotherium did not look or behave like any mammal still alive today. Well, I'm pretty it sure it behaved somewhat like some of them. It had a bunch of bizarre features that look like a freaky animal created well, do, in somebody's dream. Stand, stand on its, its ass or something. Its front legs were longer. It had claws rather than hooves, which it likely used to... Drink, give me leaves! Oh, no wonder it has no living descendant. <laughs> it was like a bigger and much more muscular gorilla. Wow, that is, that is a choice a edit. <laughs> or something with hooves. It didn't eat meat, preferring a diet of Bench. small eyes, big bite. The T-Rex had very small arms. Oh my god, that T-Rex. Jesus, get a zoom in on that. You put Giganotosaurus at like number seven or something. And you said it's bigger, it's faster than the T-Rex. And yet, even though you did all of that, and you showed the Giganotosaurus eight sauropods, I'm curious as to why they're putting T-Rex at number one, apart from the fact that it's just a bloody T-Rex. But new research shows oh, that not only did Rex, the most it famous dinosaur in history have tiny arms, but it also had unusually small eyes. Right. 
Researchers from Did the it? University of Birmingham believe its tiny eyeballs helped it to bite even harder. Um, I mean, okay, uh, uh, right? The team investigated the oval eye sockets of the T-Rex. I'm no paleontologist, but that kind of looks like an Allosaurus. Oh, 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 okay, okay. Found them to be unexpectedly narrow. Oh, they it didn't say it would compare it to an Allosaur. That, that was a T-Rex skull. Okay. Thereby reducing the space needed to house the eyeballs, the T-Rex freed up space for jaw muscles to grow. This increased the robustness of the T-Rex skull, increased its jaw muscles, if it had big eyeballs and allowed for a, bit, a much they would more pop out. powerful bite. <laughs> the T-Rex would have had utterly atrocious vision, hardly able to see anything except movement. <laughs> what? What? Except move, except for a blurry, blurry colored. I don't even know what to say to that. Look, I, I don't even know why I'm trying to take this video seriously. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. I'm not believing that for a second, though. Once he locked onto a victim, his massive mouth. Oh and my god, teeth it's a zombie Saurus Rex. The rest. Well, thank you, Origins Explained. Brilliant, brilliant video. I will say, however, I mean, I'm already we're seeing another video from them. Incredibly advanced ancient technology and it shows a mountain floating. <laughs> Anyone can make content, but wow, that is choice. And before we go, let's look at one of the most popular uh, creators in the 3D prehistoric space. And that is Julian Johnson Mortimer. He makes these incredibly highly detailed dinosaurs prehistoric life creatures and I, I, there's something about them i think it's because they've got so much detail on them amazingly massive there's something about it that just gives a sense of scale and this one is called megalodon the revenge one of my favorite things about him is the underwater stuff he does. There's the time, the effort, the work that's went into something like this, especially compared compar to what we just looked at, which took two seconds. This is like talent stuff, beautiful. Like all these little megalodons. I think that is supposed to be a leviathan? A leviathan? I can't remember how you call it, but it is just beautiful. And he does, he, like, there's so many more um, videos that they do, or he's done. I, I don't know whether it's a team or if he just does it by himself. But yeah, I think there's just so much little details, like the little shoals of fish, the barnacles on the whale. Amazing stuff. Like, look at the scratches and the scars on it. Look at this. Oh my god. So this, I think, is supposed to be like a hunt between Megadon and Leviathan. Which again, prehistoric whale, prehistoric shark that did live in the same time period. I think they hunted each other. Got a little bit of a Davy Jones thing going on with the, the music. I'm going to eat you. So I think this is a part two, if I remember correctly, to. I mean, obviously a part one. I think like the Leviathan kill like a Megalodon baby or something, but I highly suggest checking out the channel. They do some amazing work. Like this is how far we've come. You know, your Jurassic Park, it's, it's breaking the industry CGI technology that took so much time. Ah, oh, gorgeous. And here we are. I'm watching this on freaking YouTube. <laughs> you know, you can create stuff like this. As long as you've got, you know, expensive brick and stuff. Damn. No! So, wait, I mean, it lasted way longer than I thought it would have lasted, actually. I've always had this on my list to watch. No. The Whaley. <laughs> and you're dead. You die. No! It looks like it's it. No! It's oh, no! It's dead wet. Wow. <laughs> but again, I think it is just that everything's so crisp and there's so much detail that it just makes everything seem huge. And then you've got actual puffer fish there? Is that real footage? That might be real footage. And he's just put this over the top of it to just give it a real sense of belonging there. 
amazing. And there you go, loads of other stuff. Anyway, guys, I just wanted to make a little short video just reacting to what's going on while we're in this drought of Jurassic content. There is still amazing creators out there that are making, you know, filling in the gaps, as it were, while we wait for more official Jurassic media, whether it's TV shows, movies, whatever. We have Camp Cretaceous, of course, that's coming back. And it seems to be like they've taken some things on board. But anyway, guys, if, you, if you've enjoyed any of these, check out their YouTube channels. And until next time, I'll see you guys later. Oh, bye-bye.